It is NAM 2020. My name is Florentino Buenaventura, CEO of Talk Media, and right now the host of the Change and Stage show. And we've been talking about movers and shakers, thought leaders in the music industry, predominantly in the music space. But this gentleman next to me right here is changed the game in so many ways. Iconic player, musician. If you've ever heard of Michael Jackson album from Bad all the way back, all the my favorite ones keyboardist, synth- synthesizer, guru, um, Moog, original player. I keep keep, go, keep that'll going. Be the, that'll, be the, the, <laughs> that'll be the interview. Um, you, you have, oh, you've changed the game for, for, for anybody who does electronic music because of the things that you've pioneered. It was a great era. It was a, just a great era to be part of the record industry with. We had... Uh, multiple layers of musicians and rhythm sections. Yes. Uh, we had phenomenal arrangers, uh, you know, five deep, six deep, uh, 13 deep on the musicians, the rhythm sections, 13 deep. Wow. Uh, if, if, you know, somebody, a great drummer, John Guerin, didn't show up for a session, uh, you could call and any of the great players would be there in 10 minutes. It was, it was a great time to be there. And we had budgets. That's the big thing because we because we sold product. Yeah, you know we sold records, and and now you still see that somebody gets a phenomenal press for selling a million records or six million records, right. almost unheard of. We were selling 175 million records. Oh man! Yeah, that is that is. Just and and, and at one time I had uh, 175 with Michael Jackson and 139 with Lionel Richie. 139 million, 175 million at one time. Hi, Karen. <laughs> well, I thought it was just 139 for Michael. <laughs> uh, no, I think it's 175. No, no, it was, it was yeah. it was a great era. So so there was there were funds, yeah, yeah. you know, and and it wasn't a big deal if you wanted to hire four or five guys to play a, a rhythm date. Yeah. Uh, or to play an album and book them for a four or five day period. Yes. You know, yes. and yeah. Uh, it was, it, yeah, but now we're here. Yeah. And where are we now? We are at a place where it's a changing, uh, it's changing world. It's changing way stage. changing. Uh, yes. And, and you can, uh, you're expected to be the guy, one guy who sits with a computer in a box and plays all the parts yourself. Yeah. And, and even if you're not a, a great drummer or a great bass player, say, because you can edit so much, you can then correct it to take the time. Quantizing. We, we had to play it live, uh, yeah, straight you know, through. right there. Actually, you had to play it and tune your Moog while you were going along. <laughs> the so. Prophet 5 hitting the tune button. Yeah, yeah. The CS80 hit. Because it, it didn't just, stay in tune. Oh, well, you know, uh, towards the end, after, yeah, after, yeah, the, after Rev, got, the Rev 3s stayed yeah, in tune. Yeah, yeah. 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 So... You're touching on a very important question here. This has been all about the big picture. That what all these interviews that we've been doing. Right. We want to know what you thought leaders are, are. You know, what's your vision and your perspective of, of the industry? And I want to let you guys know this man's so iconic. He created his own conference about the synth industry, and it's called Synthplex. March 26th through 29th in March of this year at the uh, Burbank Convention Center at the Burbank Airport. So we're going to kind of touch on that a little bit later on, but I want to... You're going to be there. I, I'm going to be there. Yo, sure. absolutely. Uh, yeah, great, I'm going to be there. Great, so great, we're going to be doing some... We're going to talk. So great. with that said, um, where do you think we are right now with the music industry from music equipment, what you're doing there, and 
how it's distributed? I know it's a big, like, open-ended question, but... Okay, Synthplex is not just about music equipment. No. It's about creativity. It's everything from the psychology of stage fright uh, on through uh, PROs and their function, through collecting neighboring rights, uh, through how to compose for film, how to compose for streaming, how to compose uh, 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 songwriting, yeah. uh, you know, and musicianship and synthesis as well. So, because I consider anybody who uses a computer in the commission of making music, like the commission of making a yeah. crime, but the commission of making music, you, uh, those people, even though they consider themselves guitar players, they are electronic musicians because they're using a computer, yeah. they're using plugins, they're manipulating, editing, they're electronic musicians. Yes. So we address all of that at Synthplex. Uh, the rest of the question was? What, where do you think we are right now? What, 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 what's... It's interesting. It's it's really interesting. You know, there are people that are making money. Uh, it's shifted a lot yeah. to the people who are performing, making seventy five percent. I heard earlier today, versus buku, yeah. buku dollars out there, huge tours, billion dollar tours, yeah. stuff like that, and merch, all that great yeah. income. So there's a shift from that part of the studio industry, mm -hmm. you know, where people were able to not travel yeah. and still play on a lot of music and, and do whatever, now it seems that there's, I, I would even say that there's a healthy amount of live performance in it. Healthy amount. Because I think it's, it's not right and healthy for a musician not to play in front of crowds. Yeah. Uh, to see what, how people react to each note that you play. I, th I think that's a very key part to what we do. Um, it's shifting. Uh, I'm looking very much forward to what's going on with DDEX uh, and the Open Music Initiative that we are able to now track our music performance from the inception all the way through the UPC code on the final product being sold so that when I sell a song or Steve Vai sells a song, yeah. he sells a record in Taiwan, one hour later... He knows. He knows. It's there. It's nothing. You shouldn't have to wait a year and three quarters to get a statement to find out that you have a following in South America. Yeah, you know, yeah. you want to if you if you sold 10,000 records this month, you want to be down there promoting it. And, yes. and this is enabling us to do that. Yes. And I think, you know, kind of jumping back into it, the answers that, you, that I, I think you're providing are going to be demonstrated at Synthplex. Oh, yeah. Uh, we, we ha DDEX is coming. Uh, we have a lot of neighboring rights people speaking uh, as well. But, you know, that's a small part. Again, yeah. the, uh, we have music performance. Uh, uh, like I said, psychology. We have uh, training for kids that are in uh, middle school and high school and college arts departments. Yeah. Uh, all of that, Dr. Bob Sound School, Kidsplex, uh, and then we have a music festival. There's uh, about 50 acts that will be playing uh, each night. First night's going to start with a Keith Emerson tribute. Going to be showing oh, yeah. that Keith Emerson yeah. film, and uh, it's uh, EMAP is bringing the big Keith Emerson Moog. Mm -hmm. It's a, a really, really uh, terrific event, a broad event. Amazing, yeah. amazing. Yeah. How can we grow this industry as a collective? What, 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 what I know well, that you just did to keep. You're doing it. What you're doing, Tino, what you're doing, well, thank you're, you, you're pr promoting what is the industry to more people. Your radio shows, this, everything helps join people together. We, we used to have this series of bands and rehearsals, uh, rehearsal. Uh, uh, like uh, SIR, uh, Third Encore, those yeah. places, rehearsal facilities. We used to be in the studio. We, we would have uh, you know, a group like United Western where there were, what, 11 studios all there where you would all be standing there, hi Bruce, uh, that we would, we would all bump into each other in the hall. And that's been replaced by uh, the kind of social groups ASMAC, uh, Alliance of Women Film Composers, the Society of Composers and Lyricists, NERIS, yeah. uh, uh, NAM, yeah. all of this is helping strengthen our music community because if we stand together, people can't do stuff like they were trying to do before we passed the Music Modernization Act. They were trying to get the, the, 
the big guys yeah. like Spotify yeah. uh, uh, the, it, it, we're still struggling a little bit with some of the streaming services but but it's getting better where they were trying to say oh no statutory rate has to be less where we just talked about that the, at the beginning where you know we'd sell 139 million records 300 million downloads of and and I was there when Lionel got his first checks so I know I'm not going to talk about the money but it was yes, big yeah. right the um, when when Pharrell got the check for Happy for 300 million downloads. It was something like thirteen thousand dollars to split yeah. between two people, as compared to used to get twenty five cents to a dollar per oh, record yeah. on one hundred thirty five, one hundred seventy five million yeah, records sold. That's a big, big difference. Big difference. You can't, you can't, you can't pay for going into the studio with those tiny returns on and, your money and invite groups of solid players to play along with you. Unless yeah. you're paying pennies or they're doing it as a favor. Right. And that's, right. that's definitely and, changed the game. And that it. doesn't, my bank won't take pennies for my house mortgage, how, how do nor we, does my college for my kids take pennies. They won't take cookies. Yeah. Uh, but maybe coffee. I don't know. No, <laughs> I owe you some coffee, by the way. I, I have it here, by the way. We're going to see you tomorrow morning for yeah, that. I'll, I'll, I, yeah, I got you the, I got your bags of coffee at the Oh, other oh thank you. So. I love that coffee. That was great. great. Well, we got more for you, man. Thanks. Um, we're the coffee business, too, guys. I don't know if you know that, but we give out coffee. That's the special inner talk flavor. Uh, Love it. We'll Absolutely have it great. You got to check it out. <laughs> definitely get your buzz on. Yeah, definitely. And the coffee guru right here. So what do we do? How do we get people paid now? How do we get these musicians to... Well, first thing you have to do is be aware of where the income streams are from. Yeah. The income streams are uh, f from things like neighboring rights, uh, your uh uh, perform, uh, performing rights organizations, but neighboring rights globally, right? It's no longer just here we are in the United yeah. States, and maybe you get some money from Germany because Germany was the second biggest market. Now you get 187 countries that are all paying in, yeah. and what you have to be aware of is how to register your works and the the the. Uh, information that is contained in all the the ISNI numbers or whatever, like go check out uh, Imogen Heap's yeah. uh, passport because she's got a place to collect all of your information. So all of your works are there. People can see you can you can be tracked to get you the money. There's this huge amount of money in black boxes, right? Yeah. That they don't know who to give the money to. They don't know how to get in touch with them. You know? Yeah. People are off playing on the next record and they're not really you know broadcasting what they did yeah. and and there are no uh, album notes anymore so yeah. how do you know who played on what yeah. how do you track it how do you track who the bass player was on a record that only says the artist's name yeah you know yeah. Uh, some some of them don't even say the producer's name anymore so uh, uh, those numbers and identifying your works that you've cooperated with get get them online and then you can track your earnings that is synthplex we talk about that at great length <laughs> well you guys got to make it out to synthplex for sure because i went last year it's amazing it's more than just synth like like michael oh, said oh yeah yeah it's way more than just synth because so, because we all the film composers the streaming composers the tv composers the jingle composers the songwriters the arrangers uh the electronic musicians the sound effects uh designers all those people we, we bring them all together. We feed them all. Yeah. Yeah. And my last question actually kind of answered throughout the process. Um, what's next? And kind of expand a little bit about that. That's the, you know, where, where are we going next? <laughs> okay. I just, I just did a presentation on that this morning. I, I, right? You're, right. Keynote speaker, by the way. Okay. We're very fortunate to have him. So, so, so in looking at it, you know, I... How arrogant would I have to be to try and say that I know what the fi next five years are going to be like because you're going to show up at the NAMM show and there's going to be a hundred new items that nobody ever told you about three days before. The, it's, it's almost impossible to predict. Somebody's going to come up with technology that's going to blow everything out of the water. Mini 2 is going to be great. Uh, I was meeting with DDEX today. 
We're trying to get them together with MIDI 2 so okay. that the creator information can be embedded from the very beginning, contained in those MIDI files, contained in the DAWs, and it gets tracked all the way through. All, all, all of that data gets tracked all the way through to the UPC code. That will be a big deal for us. Right, yes. and uh, and even even people who make sample libraries that they would know that where applicable there are sample libraries where somebody holds a key and just plays back their sample library, that person's not the composer. Yeah, the person who made the sample library is. Yeah, exactly. Right? And and you'd be able to track all that. Uh, AI is changing a lot because AI is recognizing uh, even if you have a down in Hall E where I just was, they had a little uh, thirty dollar plugin that separates the drums from the bass from the vocal from what they call other and all the other parts. And you could take a drum and a bass track and, from somebody else's record and put a new record over the top of it. But with AI, you can track that. Wow. Yeah. So, so you'll, you'll actually get part of can your I payment. Can I call you a futurist? <laughs> <laughs> well, it, a it, is, it is coming. But yeah. you know, the networks have stuff like that. Networks have stuff that uh, actually puts, because when you separate the audio to use a new codec on it, uh, audio from the video, you're using a new v video codec, the audio is separated out. Yes. They're two separate files. Yeah, yeah. And then you have to make sure that the sync. lips are back in sync and AI is doing that for them. So it's coming. This, this information will all be available to us soon. Uh, MIDI 2 is going to change everything uh, be, be just because we're getting closer to an analog line. It's yeah. no longer going to be these chopped informations where you hear grrr, right? Yeah. You're going to have smooth volume changes, smooth filter changes. You're going to have more expression. We're gonna have more than 127, is what you're telling me. <laughs> it's actually MIDI two, the highest at at 32-bit uh, is four billion, four point six billion. Slightly larger. Yeah, slightly <laughs> larger. Too 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 much really for technology to handle yeah, yeah, now. Yeah. But uh, if you go even from the seven bit that we're used to with the 128 yeah, yeah. to uh, 14 bit. 14-bit uh, puts you at 16,000, so you have for every one step of 128, the 0 through 127, you have a carrot, and you have another 128 in that carrot. So wow. it's manageable, and yet you get a lot more expression. Um, exciting times, man. Oh, boy. Exciting times. It, it is exciting. And with, you know, as the new Mac stuff, that big Mac that has what oodles of processing power blows everything else out of the water as that becomes more affordable that technology more affordable you know yeah. a lot of people to spend twenty thousand dollars on just the computer that's too much money yeah right but as it becomes more affordable the processing power is is nuts it's awesome. going to be great brother hey we never have enough time, man. We're gonna we're gonna have to go to the studio. We're gonna actually sit down and really dive in. We'll man. do that. Yeah. I bought a microphone just for you. You know, when we were talking about doing the radio yeah. show, I got microphones for you. It's well, gonna be great. You and I. We're you and me, folks. Thank you very much for joining us. We've got another episode of Nam 2020 Inner Talk, uh, but we're gonna bring up Terry Woman after this with Vicky Randall. So stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. Michael Boddicker, my Tino, brother. Love you, man. I love you too, man. All right. Thank you. We are out of Keep here. Keep the faith. Have yeah. hope. Yes. There is hope. Lots of hope. And God bless you all.